Welcome to the Ocular, my private study. We can speak here without fear of being overheard. I have much to explain, but the truths which I must touch upon in doing so would cause only distress and confusion to the people of this world. Pray keep that in mind. Now, I am sure you are desperate to know the fate of your fellow scions. To put it simply, they are here in the first. Their arrival, however, was not as recent as you may imagine. Here, time flows at a different pace from that of the source. In the space of a single hour in your home world, an entire year might pass in the first, and the reverse could also be true. The pace fluctuates without rhyme or reason, and it cannot be predicted. That said, we seem to be entering a period of mere equivalence. And thus, for the moment, you need not overly concern yourself with the passage of time. As for your companions, however, Eustola and Urianger have dwelt here for three winters, all told, while Thancred's count stands at five. Even our more recent arrivals, Alphino and Alize, have lived in the first for almost a year. My intention had been to summon only you, but the art of reaching across worlds has proven exceedingly difficult to master. Thus it was that my fumbling hand closed upon those to whom your fate is most closely bound as well. As they were not the object of my summons, their transference was incomplete. Though they may appear to possess corporeal bodies, they are, in truth, merely spirits that one can see and touch. Consequently, while you yourself will be able to pass between worlds with relative freedom, they will not. Much as it grieves me, they are stranded here, unable to return. We spent every waking hour searching for a way to reverse the summoning. In the beginning, at least. As you may have surmised, however, our efforts met with little success. And then we all but abandoned the endeavor once Urianger shared with us the vision he had witnessed during his journey through the rift. In that chaotic no man's land between realms, Time and space warp and blend in unexpected ways. What Urianger saw was the future, that which would one day come to pass. In his vision of tomorrow, the first was rejoined with the source. This collision of worlds brought about the eighth umbral calamity and the deaths of countless multitudes. Amongst those who perished, Urianger clearly saw the fall of the Scion's mightiest champion. He watched you die. And thus did the Scions embrace their exile, and began searching this world for a means to forestall the coming catastrophe in yours. Their souls are stranded in the first, yes, but they have fought on, desperate to save their home and you from destruction. Nor have their efforts been in vain, for it was they who finally established that the elimination of the Sin Eaters will indeed serve to prevent the Calamity. Considering these circumstances of our meeting, you would be forgiven for doubting my version of events. And so, before all else, I would suggest you track down your comrades and hear the tale from their lips. I shall of course be happy to assist in these reunions and you need not make any decisions regarding your involvement until you are certain of where you stand. Meanwhile, I promise I will not rest until I have found a way to help your friends return home. What say you? Have I earned your trust for the moment, at least?
Excellent. You will not regret this. With that settled, we shall have to see about getting you ready for the road. Traveling across the rift has no doubt left you weary. I will arrange for a room where you might rest in comfort. While it's being prepared, perhaps I can show you around. This is the Musica Universalis, the commercial heart of the Crystarium. All you might need to prepare for your journeys can be purchased here. Ah, yes. You must be curious about the currency. Fear not. The gill you carry will serve you well enough. Each nation once minted its own coins, but was all a jumbled mess following the flood. After much debate, the local merchants eventually elected to revert to the old ways, wherein a coin's value was decided by the worth of its metal. As for a unit of measurement, we agreed upon the term gill, a word borrowed from coins uncovered within the crystal tower here. And as our traders peddled their wares across the land, so too did our usage of gill become common practice. From what your stola tells me, a standard coin from the source equates to exactly one gill here, or near enough not to matter. Our way of life has benefited greatly from the artifacts we recovered from the tower, some of which may be familiar to you. But I fear it would not be practical for us to provide everything to which you are accustomed. You shall need a means to access the commodities of your home world. A van kerm sin? Yes, I'm here. Of course I'm here. What amusements do you have for me today? My dear Feo Ool. Paragon of pixie kind. For you, I have the most vital task. This fine gentleman is a friend from a distant realm. And we have need of a means to ferry things back and forth from his home. Might you be able to assist us in this matter? Beyond, didn't you? From beyond the rift. How wonderfully exciting! What a brave and reckless and marvelous thing you did! You've the heart of a pixie, you do. After careful consideration, I have decided to grant you my assistance. 
Make a pact with me and the fun can begin. But answer me this, traveller. Did your garments come with you when you crossed over? Your teeth? Your nails? Just as I thought! Then you've a good stout connection with your home through which all your belongings, great and small, may easily pass. From this moment forth I will be your Isnefis and you my Snay Yak. Like the branch which sprouts from the sapling, our bond will flow unbroken from one to the other. Raise your hand. Bound now, dearest sapling. Come, come then, make your request. Tell me your desire. I wish to visit this world of yours. Mayhap her message to your friends in the source to inform them of your safe arrival. Consider it done. As you heard, that was Feo Ul of the Pixies. Their kind possess an affinity for magic akin to that of arcane beings. They rarely show themselves in populated areas, but Feo is insatiably curious even by Pixie standards, and seems to have taken a liking to the Crystarium. Right, we were going to organize a room for you, weren't we? Come along. I know you. You're the warrior of light from the source. What? Did you just... You can hear me? Oh, gods, how long has it been? I... 
That was what I called myself in your world. The Warrior of Darkness. My real name is Ardbert. I used an alias in the source, a daft one, looking back. If you recall my tale, it was my comrades and I who caused the flood. We thought our home doomed. And so we listened to the Asians. Let them guide us to the source and try to hasten their God's damned ardor. I remember when we fell, defeated by you and yours. I remember our audience with Minfilia, how she listened to our pleas and returned our souls to the first. The flood was poised to swallow Norvrand. Minfilia and my friends, they... They surrendered what little they had left to hold it back. Just faded away. Leaving me to bear witness. Tell me, do you know the year? How much time has passed since we caused the flood? A hundred years. A hundred long years. My hands find no purchase. My gestures catch no eye, and my pleas, be they whispered or screamed, reach not a single ear. I am a shade, cursed to do naught but drift. I feel as if I've been walking forever. I hardly noticed when my mind and body began to fray at the edges. Then bang! My senses were sharp again. I felt like a fish being reeled in, and before I knew it, I found myself in this room. Why is it that you can see me? What are you even doing here, come to that? You were summoned to save the first. A waste of time. This world is beyond saving, like those who try to save it. Muddled as my mind may be, I've not forgotten that. But if fate has brought me to you, the one person in this God's forsaken world who can see and hear me, then perhaps there is a reason I endured. If I can find out why I was left behind, then maybe... Maybe I can bring this journey of mine to an end. Well, I'll be watching, Warrior of Light. But do me a favor. Be careful out there. This world has had its fill of heroes.
did you find your new quarters? I trust you were able to rest. I was not aware the room was haunted, and you were rather tired. Well, should you receive another visitation, be sure to let me know. Now, let us return to the subject of the Scion's whereabouts. This map shows the lands of Norvrand, the only area to be spared the Flood of Light. The Crystarium is here, in the region known as Lakeland. The north is the fairy kingdom of Il Meg. That is where you'll find Orianger. To the east lies the once prosperous civilization of Rak Tika. Yostola is stationed there, in the heart of the forest. Alas, neither location can be reached without considerable difficulty. As such, I would suggest you first seek out one of the twins each of whom is stationed but a short flight from the Crystarium. Alphino is on Calusia, an island off the western shore. It is home to a city called Yulmor, where the rich and privileged while away their days in idleness. For his part in furthering our cause, Alphino journeyed there to meet with the citizenry and forge alliances. From what I hear, he has since kept himself busy gathering information around the main settlement. Alize, meanwhile, traveled south to the arid wastes of Armoreng. They lie upon the very edge of the inhabitable world, where the flood of light was halted. Those who dwell there live in constant fear of attack by the Sin Eaters. In contrast to her brother, Alize felt that her energies would better be spent learning about the enemy, and thus she sells her services as a guard, both to hone her skills and gather information on our foe. So, will it be Calicia or Armoreng? It matters not which you choose to visit first. Simply inform me once you have made your decision, and I will see to it that you are provided with a suitable mount. Ah, but you must be wondering about Thancred. He has taken up with a new companion, and is presently engaged as a wandering hunter of Sin Eaters. Being ever on the move, his whereabouts are often difficult to ascertain, but I am certain your paths will cross ere long.
The whistling breeze, mute. The pounding surf, frozen. Time itself takes a breath. At light's edge, all is perfectly still. The world captured in a painting, locked in a moment. Music, faint and fleeting, drifts coastward on the lifeless air. And in the distance, beyond the broken earth, a city beckons.
And how is business today, Mistress Theva? Oh, frenetic. Look, I have a new customer. It is good to see you, my friend. The barley seeds you wanted. They should produce a better harvest than the last. What, just like that? Oh, well, Fino, you really are a dear. Well? I'd best be tidying up some of those empty shacks before the pests move in. Keep an eye on the place while I'm out, eh? It seems an age since last we spoke. Not since the prisoner exchange in Doma. And Yotsu. It has been even longer for me, of course, if you count the days I've spent here. The time has only added to the relief I feel seeing you safe and well. Huh. Alizé said much the same thing. I don't think I've ever had such a scolding. But I believe an exchange of news is in order. Come, tell me of your arrival and all that came before. I see. But the Exarch and Alizé told me what they knew of events, but I had stubbornly clung on to the hope that all-out war might yet be avoidable. And poor Tataru. She must be sick with worry. We must endeavor to return as soon as we may. It would be nice to bring her good tidings for a change. But before we bid this world farewell, we must first ensure that it is not rejoined to the source. We must prevent the Eighth Umbral Calamity. Orianger's vision of the future has, I fear, every chance of coming true. By his description, the catalyst for the Calamity was a formless and deadly weapon employed by the Garlean Empire. Which can only mean one thing. Black Rose. Gaius was telling you the truth. When we were on the trail of the Asians, we saw evidence that the gas was being manufactured once more. Gaius was adamant that the project had been scrapped. But so long as there are wars to be waged, there will always be those determined to win by any means. And thus simply destroying the existing stores of Black Rose would do little to alter fate's course. In that sense, our involuntary journey here to the first was something of a boon. Together with the Exarch, we've developed a theory as to how we believe the rejoining will be set in motion. I'm sure Orianger himself will cover the subject in more detail. But I can tell you the process requires that both worlds, the Source and the First, be facing an existential threat. One being Sin Eaters, of course. They are a menace that I would dearly love to remove, and not just to avert a calamity. I may be a stranger to this world, but I will not stand idly by and let innocent people be slaughtered. That is what brought me to the gates of Yulmore. Ignoring its pretensions as a kind of capital city to what remains of the world, it is nonetheless a center of power and authority. If any solutions are to be found, I believe our search should begin there. What say you, old friend? Hungry for another adventure?
And so we take to the road once more, 